Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to AVP Underworld Episode 9. I'm your host, Nick, and I am joined, of course, by Michael, a.k.a. Failwhale34. What a ski guys. Glad to be back here on AVP Underworld. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and we also have newcomer Luke, Ooh. DC Luke, to be exact, from the channel, as you guys probably have heard him before. Hey, guys, what's going on? Yeah, and... Nobody else. That, that <laughs> that's your that's your <laughs> just uh, us. that's what you get. No so one just, else was allowed. Yeah, you gotta get through it. But anyways, I think this is gonna be a pretty good episode because uh, this is going to be our thirtieth anniversary kind of special retrospective for the original Predator film, which opened in theaters June twelfth, nineteen eighty seven. Glad to actually finally get to talk about some Predator stuff. Uh Mostly I just get to talk about DC stuff and just regular movies and the mummy and Transformers, Ooh. but now... The cream of the crop, about, eh? Yeah, I get to talk about a good franchise. <laughs> well, I mean, once good <laughs> franchise, I think now some yeah, of the that, that's fair. That's sequels kind of went off, but uh, Michael, how are you doing on this illustrious evening? On this illustrious evening? I'm doing, I'm doing pretty well, just... Uh, Swamped with videos, just trying to crank them out before I head off for vacation for a week to Jamaica. So, uh, Ooh. just been busy. Okay. Yeah, Mikey. But, like, how about yourself, Jamaica. man? What you, what you been up to? Uh, not much. Just kind of, you know, working on videos as well and catching up on some comics recently. I hey, went and picked up reading? some new stuff, uh, some new DC stuff, but also Predator stuff. Uh, as some of you might know, there is a new limited series out there right now called Predator Hunters. It's a five-issue series that started in May. The second issue just came out, I think, last week as of this recording. And so far, it's really cool. I really enjoyed the artwork about it. And I like the fact that they're introducing characters that were in some of the older Predator comics back from, like, the 80s and 90s uh, back into continuity. So that's always nice to see the connective tissue. Um, so definitely check that out uh, if you have not read it yet. Predator Hunters, it's out there right now. Um, but also... Before we get into this episode, I did want to mention uh, a shout out to A Box for their Alien Covenant themed box, which you guys can go check out right now. I'll leave a link to it in the description box and in the comment section. Uh, they sent us a box, well, me, I guess. They sent me a box, and it's <laughs> oh, really, really cool. It's $55 currently, but you get definitely what you pay for. I mean, there's some. Awesome life-size replicas in there, there's a t-shirt, uh, other stuff. Um, so, yeah, definitely check it out if you're interested in that. So, I guess getting into the show, our first segment is talking about the recent Alien and Predator Universe news. So our first topic is okay. the synopsis for the Alien Covenant prequel novel called Alien Covenant Origins has finally been revealed. And it's something that's quite different. Um, I think a lot of people were expecting a book that would kind of tell what happened between Prometheus and Covenant, like, you know, David and Shaw's journey that we saw a little bit of in, like, a viral YouTube clip. But I think people were hoping for, like, a full um, novel kind of talking about that. But, yeah, um, the synopsis is quite different, so I'm just going to really quickly get through it and then we'll give our thoughts on it. So... It says, as the colony ship Covenant prepares for launch and the final members of the crew are chosen, a series of violent events reveal a conspiracy to sabotage the launch, yet the perpetrators remain hidden behind a veil of secrecy. The threat reaches all the way up to Hideo Yutani, the head of the newly merged Whaling Yutani Corporation, when his daughter is kidnapped. Is this the conspiracy, the product of espionage, or something more sinister? While Captain Jacob Branson and his wife Daniels prepare the ship, Security Chief Lope signs a key member of his team, and together they seek to stop the technologically advanced saboteurs before anyone else is killed, and the ship itself is destroyed in orbit. So, Michael, what are your thoughts on this novel, and are you at all interested by the story? Like, what, you know, what I was talking about before, like the whole Dan David and Shaw thing, or do you think this is more kind of interesting? You know what? I think for an Alien Covenant origin, focusing more on the the crew and some some of the other stuff connecting to Earth, I I find that interesting. I kind of want to know a little bit more about that because I I do feel like we saw it like in the prologue. There's more to those characters than we actually got to see in the movie. Yeah. Um. So potentially this origins uh, Alien Covenant origins could show that there may be you know like the same thing espionage, someone's trying to sabotage. 
I'm kind of interested. Like maybe there's someone in the, in the movie we saw in the movie who was behind some some sinister shit that we didn't see. Mm. Um, so that actually kind of piques my interest. Um, but it kind of sucks. Now that you mentioned it, we we don't get to see or hear anything more of the journey of Dan of uh, sorry David <laughs> and um, Shaw. Yeah, but, uh, definitely. I actually like it. How about you? Um, you know, I was very much looking forward to the Shaw and David story because. I mean, the movie has already been out for about a month now. I think we could talk spoilers on it, but basically Shaw is killed off, and there's not really any explanation as to why, or if she got any of her mm-hmm. answers, or what really happened, um, why David killed the engineers. There's just so much that could have been explored in a prequel novel like that, like kind of focusing on that aspect of it. Um, but at the same time, you know, what we're getting with this story, I mean, it does sound a little interesting, I think the thing that stands out to me the most is actually learning more about the corporation, Wayland Yutani, because that's mm-hmm. something that really hasn't been explored um, in the expanded media. But, Luke, what are your thoughts on uh, this, this synopsis? I am kind of with you guys. It wasn't what I was expecting. I was really hoping that we'd get some more clarification with David and Shaw, but, you know, focusing more on the crew, I think, is fine. And I think it really does fit well for, like, an Alien Covenant prequel, because, um,. I guess at the end of the day, like, we were following the Covenant crew more than anything. If we were going to get a prequel to that movie, it would be following those characters as opposed to people from, like, Prometheus. But, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it does seem kind of interesting because, like Nick said, we've never actually explored Wayland yutani So to see a little bit more of that, the whole corporate <laughs> espionage thing, seems like it would be really interesting to kind of go into into a little bit more depth in this universe. Yeah. Yeah, and something that kind of... Uh stands out to me is the line where it says to, they seek to stop the technologically advanced saboteurs. So, like, does that mean the androids? No, the predators. That connect? Oh, gosh, that would be oh, really God. cool. <laughs> um, but, like, do you think that connects possibly to uh, Walter? Um, or, no. I, I don't know. Probably, no. They mean, they mean replicants, dude. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> um... Or maybe those Working Joes, I don't the know. The Working Joes? Those are Sikhs in Corporation. Oh, are they? Yeah. I haven't played that game in a while. can't even remember. So, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the synopsis... Yeah. The You know, the what? one redeeming factor of this book, too, I just realized, is that it's being written by Alan Dean Foster, who's like a veteran sci-fi author. He's fantastic. I mean, he wrote right, right. the original three novelizations for Alien 1, 2, and 3, the, the movie books... And he just recently wrote the Alien Covenant novelization, which I thought was far better than the film itself. So, I mean, if anyone's going to do this kind of story, it's him. And as far as I know, this is all his original material, too. Like, he basically came up with this story from the ground up, got it approved by Fox and co. And, yeah, this is what he wanted to do. So, if he wanted to do something with this, fine by me, I guess. I'll just have to wait and see, really. It's, it's hard to kind of judge it just off the synopsis, too. But another thing interesting, too is that no aliens are mentioned at all. So, that's kind of weird. An alien right. book with no aliens. I don't know how that feel about that, but... Well, that's what Covenant should have been, an alien movie with no aliens. Y- yep. That... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly right, yes. Also, before we actually know, you know, let's just dive right into the Predator discussion. We can get into that other thing I was going to bring sure. up later on. All right, yeah, yeah. So, this is the 30th anniversary of the Predator this year. And I think for this episode, we did want to do like a special retrospective, kind of like what we've been doing for the Alien films recently. We, we did Alien 1 and 2 and 3. Um, hopefully get into Resurrection and Prometheus soon enough. I think Resurrection, for some reason, the funny thing, I'll give like a little behind the scenes thing. We've been trying to record the Resurrection episode for like a couple weeks now. The timing just never works out for um, myself and like Nick Hostetter and some of the other guests I've been trying to get on. Uh, so hopefully that one will happen eventually. <laughs> I know a lot of people hate Resurrection, though, so it's kind of like, you know, that one we got to get, like, hammered before we start recording <laughs> or something. <laughs> just, oh, man, that is a pastiche bullshit, I guess I'll say. That is just terrible. But... That, that's the one alien movie I haven't seen yet. Yeah. And good. You're lucky. But <laughs> <laughs> Comment section is going to be a good job. Stop. No. There are some cool ideas in Resurrection, but overall it's a very big missed opportunity but anyways it's yeah talking about the predator though 
Um, I guess we'll we'll start off with giving our our just thoughts overall on the film as it stands today. You know, like looking back on it, uh, Luke. What do you what do you think of the movie? What's what was your first experience watching it too? Let's get let's talk about that too. So my first experience with the Predator is actually my dad introduced me to it because he grew up and he saw the Predator and he it's like one of those big action movies that he just loves it and so he introduced me to it and. You know, just, again, like that whole ending sequence where freaking he blows himself up and he does the whole laughing thing and then just, like, the, like it's just it's the most macho movie out there. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a movie more macho than Predator. I, uh, I've been in love with this movie for a while and it's just, like, he's just, he's it's like a it's like a cult thing, kind of, because Predator is, like, one of the, like, classic horror movie monsters now. Like, everybody knows who the Predator is. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, like, it just, I guess it just had a huge impression on me as a kid, just in terms of, like, what I expect from, like, action movies and, like, what to do and everything, because it was, like, one of the first ones that really left a big impact on me. But, yeah, it's probably one of my favorite uh, sci-fi movies. Like, um, I never liked it as much as Alien, but it always really did hold a big special place in my heart, just the fact that it was something my dad and I shared together. Mm Mm-hmm. No, definitely. I have a very similar story. Uh, but Michael, what are, what are your thoughts on Predator, your first experience, etc.? Yeah, so Predator, similar to the Alien franchise, was something that I was much later on to in life. Uh, Nick and myself actually watched it together, Predator 1 and 2 together. Yeah. And I honestly had a good time with it. Um, I don't think I liked it as much as I, I, I like Alien. However, the Predator, as Luke said, has something to it. It's like the most 80s macho man movie I think I've ever seen. Yeah, never get made today <laughs> as it was back then. Oh yeah, a movie like no, that. I, I don't. I I doubt. Like, look at the one we're getting now. I don't think it's gonna be just like that. Um, <laughs> and I think because of that, it has you know, it's it's got a special place. Yeah. Um, it's like it's a very quotable movie. Great action sequences. Some great chemistry between the cast. Some great performances by them. I mean, it's it's overall like a good. It's a good fun sci-fi movie. Um, it's set in the jungle. You know, it's kind of like has that. Was it Vietnam time around it came out? Um, no, it came out in 87. It was set in? So, but, but, but it, was it, was it, wasn't it like set in like the war or something? Mm, no, I think it was set in the 80s actually, the, the movie, yeah. But it, well, sorry about that. It, does, it does have a lot of that. Vietnam themes though to it, because you have the whole military unit going in, getting taken out by like an unseen force in the jungle and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just loved yeah, all yeah. those elements and then like just introducing the predator, the powers and whatnot. Yeah. So I, I really uh, enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to the new one. Okay, so my first experience was also through my dad, who was a fan, and he actually um, visited when they were filming it back in the 80s in that jungle in uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And I'm pretty sure he saw it in theaters too, which is awesome. I wish I could have seen it in theaters. But yeah, I mean, man, ever like the first time I saw it, I knew it was just like a perfect film. And I still think it is a perfect film. I don't think, I mean, there's really no flaws to it at all i mean everything is perfectly paced it's got a great script cast is perfect um the creature itself i think it's funny if you actually go watch the early stuff of the original predator creature it basically looked like a giant walking crab it looked terrible and they actually had to (laughs) stop production i think they had shot for like a couple months they sent the uh, test footage to fox and they're like okay we're stopping production bringing on Stan Winston, the legendary, the late, great Stan Winston. Uh, and he actually designed the Predator that we see today, the one of the dreadlocks, the armored suit and everything. So we could have got a very different film had he not come on we board. We could have got an armored crab? Yeah, it would have been like yeah. a, a red crab walking around. <laughs> it looks terrible. You can Terrifying. go find the footage actually on YouTube if you haven't seen that before. Um, but yeah, it's it's such an iconic franchise and movie monster there's so many, I mean, every almost every line is quotable in the movie, which is actually pretty impressive. I mean, like, literally every line of dialogue is quotable, but, I mean, it's it's one of my go-to movies. Like, if I just want to say, like, oh, what do I want to watch? Like, I can just pop it in any time. If it's on TV and it's, like, halfway through, I can just sit there and watch the rest of it. It's so good. The The franchise just means so much to me. I, I'm not sure if I favor this or Alien, honestly. That I think they're just neck and neck for me, just in terms of what they both have to offer. But, yeah, yeah I, I even like Predator 2. I know a lot of people don't like Predator 2. Oh, yeah. But I like it a lot. I'm with you there. I like that. I like Predator 2, but, like, compared to the first one, I just think the first one's, like, a little bit better. I have to admit, Predator 2 does add a little bit more to, like, the 
overall mythology, yeah. which I think is pretty impressive. No, I mean, definitely it's a lot better than the first movie. There's a lot of flaws to it and stuff, but it's just such a different movie. Like, the first one I always say is, like, Rambo with an alien, and then the second one is very yeah. much like Dirty Harry with an alien. It's like a cop drama, kind of <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, I can see that, actually. It's pretty, mm-hmm. it's pretty good pretty good comparison yeah so that that is such a weird like concept like you're watching predator the first half of it is like a a typical kind of 80s action movie it's like commando or something and then all of a sudden like this alien comes to nowhere and like just straight up kills one of these badass mercenaries and like holy shit like what and it just switches genres like a horror film and you're like oh shit like so it to me i mean it just it's just so iconic and so perfect um but michael what in terms of like the characters, who's your favorite character out of this amazing cast of people that we had here? Ooh, that's that's a little t- obviously um freaking Arnold. He's <laughs> he's one of my What about Dylan? Like Dylan's awesome. Dylan Dylan, he he was cool. Um or Mac. What was the tech the, the, the techie guy's name? Oh, Hawkins. Shane Black. Hawkins. I liked him. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Mac. I think Mac was probably one of my favorites too. Actually, now that I'm just I'm just recalling, yeah. Mac was so good in that movie. No, oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, Luke, who who do you had to choose if you had to choose anyone out of this cast that you're use your favorite personally? Mac, hands down. Mac is the best character. <laughs> I fucking love Mac. <laughs> so good. I always great. like Blaine oh. too, but I it's it's such a shame that he dies so early. But he has a cool death yeah. though, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Cause that's yeah. the infamous scene where they mow down the entire jungle with their machine guns. This is awesome. <laughs> oh such a fucking such a cool movie. <laughs> no, it is. Like, yeah, like 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 we said, it's such a like macho man. For, like I think I, I that was probably one of the movies that it was like so much fun, and I enjoyed having my my bowl of popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like as a movie, Predator still like gets a lot of adrenaline from me, just in terms of like macho ness, like all these like really cool action scenes that they have, and there's also just the intensity of having like this alien hunting these like big really fucking muscle bound dudes like it's a it's a great movie it really uh it still gets to me like in terms of like uh tension and adrenaline and stuff no definitely and one of the things that i was gonna mention too is how the guy who directed it was john mcturnan who did die hard actually so yeah he's got a really good track record of doing those kind of action films um, but another thing about it, the whole production of it, was just that they had such a tough time shooting the film, too. And especially doing the uh, infrared sequences, too. With the, you know, the, He's looking at them with the heat vision and stuff. Like, that was so <laughs> difficult yeah. to film back then. Because they had... I mean, they didn't have, like, a filter you could just put in it on, in post-production or anything. They had to, like, literally film it with a, uh infrared camera. And that didn't work, so they had to do all this weird, wacky stuff while editing it. And then... If you mess up, you had to do the whole thing over. You couldn't, like, just yeah. go back a scene. As it was film, you, you had to, like, cut it and stuff. But, yeah, it was... <laughs> oh, man. It it seems like such a crazy production, and we got the movie we got. And a lot of people don't know, too. There's a lot of deleted scenes um, for this movie that I don't think anyone really knows about. And then the whole novelization had, like, a different version of The Predator too. I think, because they had based it like early script so yeah. that's interesting to go check out if you're a fan yeah they went to the alien homeworld and it was, it was yeah crazy, man. i don't know Pretty... wow that that's a video right there no they didn't <laughs> they did not do that no <laughs> any final thoughts on the original predator thing i think we can actually talk about the other films too really quickly i think we have time to go over the sequels yeah um luke what are your thoughts um... though on predator kind of just summed it up pretty well like predator is honestly just like one of those it's like one of those like old '80s movies that really like kind of defines that era, and it's just like it, it like it defines the '80s, but like it's still as a movie, it's it transcends that time period. Like again, like I said, you can watch that movie like even today, and it still really kind of hits you with like all that adrenaline and stuff. And I mean, again, like such a perfect design. Like the Predator just like sticks out so well, like in this day and age. And I mean. Yeah, like honestly, it's like one of those movies that's just really sticks out, and it's always going to be a classic. Yeah, I also want to mention too the man who gave life to the Predator, Kevin Peter Hall, who tragically passed oh, yeah. away. Um, great actor. I mean, no one has ever come close to portraying the creature like him. I think he was in Predator One and Two, but yeah, he's just yeah. so good. His movements and everything, the mannerisms he had. 
And it's funny, everyone tries to kind of mimic him, and I think the only person that's gotten close is Ian White, who portrayed uh, the Predator in AVP 1 and 2, and he also played the Engineer in Prometheus, which is kind of funny. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Uh, Michael, what are your final thoughts, though, on the uh, original Predator film? Yeah, like, I, I, I feel that what you said is pretty accurate, man. It transcends. It's a movie that I can watch pretty much almost any time, and I'll enjoy it. It, it just got that... It's got the id factor. You know? <laughs> it's like Commando, you know. You can just watch. It's like it. it's like like it's yeah. It's like Commando. Like I was gonna say, like I can watch that movie almost any time, and I will have a great time with it. Well, definitely. Um, I, 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 that's all I gotta say. It's it's a great movie. Okay, I think we kind of said our. Did we say our piece on Predator Two, or did you guys want to like give your thoughts on it more in depth? Or like again, like I said, it's not like uh, it's not like better than Predator One, but I mean, as a movie on its own, I never really because I I had always had like some friends of mine who always told me that like yeah man predator 2 sucks but honestly i think it's fine yeah it's a fine movie yeah i don't think it sucks <clears throat> uh per se it's just very there's, it's very different from the first one i mean you yeah go from, it's you like, go from the jungle to the city it's just like whoa concrete jungles yeah. to los angeles yeah predator concrete jungle yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know predator 2 has another thing going for it it has freaking danny glover and gary Busey and Bill Paxton. So there you go. Yeah. You and really the dude from Fear the Walking Dead. Movie. Yes, that, <laughs> that guy. he is awesome. Yeah, that guy. But also, really I, quickly, I'm getting the actor's uh, guy, the actor's name right now. He's so he's great. Really quickly, yeah. uh, rest in peace to Bill Paxton. I'm so still yeah. s- mm-hmm. shocked over that. I mean, just I can never wrap my head around that. I really, me and Michael were watching Predator Two. Literally, yeah, the night that's before. the movie we watched, right? Yeah, the, literally the night before they announced he passed, he, we were watching it. <sighs> Crazy. Yeah, that was just so tragic, man. Because I remember he popped up like, "Yo, nigga, it's fucking Bill Paxton." Yeah, and he's basically playing Hudson again, which is funny. Pretty much. <laughs> but Michael, what are your overall thoughts on Predator Two, really quickly? Yeah, I, I really enjoy Predator Two. Um, I, I think I, initially I was like, "Wait, Danny Glover's fucking he's he's a, he's a main character," <laughs> um, but I, I think it works. Um, I love Daniel Salazar in that movie. He's the uh, he's one of the other cops who kind of pushes to find the predator mm-hmm. who gets hung, I believe. Yeah, and the really cool action beat. Um, I lo- I like the end of that movie a lot when it's just Danny versus the predator, and they have the, like the science group come in the mix as well. And you know, Danny just kind of like forget them. I'm gonna just go get the the predator myself, and they have like a back and forth between each other. Uh-huh. Um, I love those dynamics of the movie. I think there are problems here and there, but for the most part, it's I think it's if you like the first predator. Um, and in the, the lore, I think you'll enjoy Predator Two, and, and, and I and I'm one of those people. No, absolutely. I really do enjoy the fact that they expanded the universe, and too gave us a little Easter egg with the alien skull too on the ship at the end. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, but our final film that we can bring up here in this podcast is Predators, the 2010 film that Robert Rodriguez produced and was directed by Nimrod Antal, who hasn't really done too many movies, um, but. Yeah, this one was Fox's first attempt at kind of trying to revitalize the franchise because they had done Predator 2 and it came out, I think, in 90... Was it 92, I think? No. Maybe 94, I can't remember. Or was it 91? I'm not sure. Sometime in the early 90s, I always forget, Predator 2 came out. It didn't really do too well, unfortunately, at the box office, and that kind of put the franchise on ice for a while. Um, then they did the whole Alien vs. Predator thing. They did two of those, and those didn't really click either. So they were trying to figure out, okay, how do we reintroduce the Predators again? And then they did the whole Robert Rodriguez script, which a lot of people don't know. He actually wrote that film in 94 with Arnold in mind to star in it. It was just going to be Arnold, like, alone, going to this sort of Predator game planet. And then when he had to rewrite it, he had to actually kind of split Arnold into, like, seven different people, which is kind of funny. Um, He had to develop all those new characters. But, yeah, I mean, my thoughts on the film, it's not great. But it does add a lot to the lore of the universe as well. Um, there's stuff that you can tell it's kind of on the cheap in that movie, which is a shame as well. And honestly, I would have preferred if Rodriguez had directed it himself. Because I think that while Nimrod Antel does some good stuff with it, uh, you can just tell that he's a very um, kind of new director. He's not doesn't really have the best grasp on stuff. But yeah, I, I kind of look at it as like, a, eh, it, you know, it happened. And I think that... Obviously, we're getting Shane Black's film now next year, and that's going to be yet another attempt to try and revitalize this franchise. But, uh, Luke, what are your thoughts on the 2010 Predators film? 
So I think I've seen this film once. Yeah. I don't remember ever seeing it again. Adrian Brody, but, um, Lawrence Fishburne. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's fine, from what I remember. It's like again, it's not like up to the standard. I think a lot of people have of the original Predator and Predator Two in my mind. But um, you know, it's like Nick said, it does add a lot of stuff. Like it really gives like this big playground, and I mean, like there's a lot of stuff that they could have really grasped onto and done more with if they wanted to continue the franchise mm-hmm. they didn't but um you know that was just mostly because i don't i don't remember if the film did that well or anything uh, i guess not no, if it, it was like a to, modest kind of box office return yeah not too yeah, i was about to, i was about to say it can't have done two i was it waited like seven years to do a new one yeah. but um <laughs> but dude those predators are strapped they got those pistols on deck to hand out to everyone it's like a loop yeah game. <laughs> like again but honestly it's fine i think it's fine it's just um yeah, it was. It's again. It was another different thing, and makes me just kind of wonder what it would have been like if it was like if we did just get the one with uh, just Arnold on the game planet. I think honestly, it would have been way better. I don't know what he d- was doing. This is ninety four. He that was that weird period in Arnold's career where he was just doing like fucking Jingle All the Way and all this weird stuff. <laughs> the <laughs> one, like the last action hero, which is I not terrible, but I mean he was doing it's weird fine. movies like that. Like he, yeah, I think. Yeah. The funny thing is, he passed on Predator Two. Actually, he was gonna be in it with Danny Glover. I mean, imagine that, like Danny Glover and Arnold. And, like, whoa, like that would have blown up the screen or something. But <laughs> he, he, I think he passed on Predator Two because he was gonna do, do Terminator Two, which I think, I guess he made the right choice with that, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, the way I see it, the Predators film that came out in twenty ten. It's just like an offshoot or something. It's not. I don't really look at it like, oh, I mean, that's a great film or anything. It's just, it's a side story that happened in the universe. I, it definitely re- refers to the first film. I think they directly call back to it. Uh, there was some yeah, cool yeah. ideas like the the Predator Hellhounds that they uh, deployed. Um, they had new weapons. They had the Berserker Super Predators, which were like basically a different breed of them. That had like a, a kind of a blood feud with the regular predators that we've seen in the old films, so I I did like that angle. They introduced some stuff like that, but yeah, you know, overall, eh. I mean, I, I didn't need to see a sequel or anything with it, so it just kind of happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Michael, you didn't see it, right? Predator what? No, stop. Twenty ten predators. Yeah, I haven't seen. <laughs> oh, that. the twenty. Oh no, I haven't seen that. I think we you caught a little bit of it when we were at New York Comic Con, though, right? It was on TV. Yeah. Oh yeah, we I did see that. You saw yeah. a little bit, yeah. Little Wait, bit. We saw. Oh, what's his name? Game? That Ma- was Marshall Ali. We right? Drinking game for predators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Marshall Ali's in that one. I remember him. He is. That yeah, that was one of his early films. Of his career. It's funny now seeing him in that, and then. <laughs> but that was funny. That drinking game. Every time Adrian Buddy does his Clint Eastwood voice, <laughs> you like die in like <laughs> the five minutes. The rules to that game, guys. If you want to get wasted, you should definitely do the drinking game. For oh that, man, man, that's no. <laughs> Prime. Yeah. Um. I guess to wrap up this uh, episode, we can discuss briefly the Shane Black film that's coming out next August now because it was pushed back from its February release date probably for good reason because they just wrapped up filming I think a couple weeks ago Um, they still have stuff to sort out I guess it probably would have been a weird time to release it in February maybe pushing it back further in the summer gives it like maybe more of a a room to have some legs and box office wise and things like that it's a better time Two on the special effects side of it, um, or if they have to do reshoots or anything like that, so you got plenty of time to do that. You got a full year basically. Um, but Luke, you know, of the stuff that we've seen in this movie, the the whole leak plot synopsis, you know, predators working alongside humans in this one, stuff like that. What do you think of the project so far? It's different. I'll definitely say that. Um, there's some unique stuff going on with this. Uh, I don't know. In all honesty, like, I kind of just got to wait and see because um, when I saw, like, the stuff for, like, Predators in 2010, I was really interested in that, and that kind of turned out to be just kind of, uh, <laughs> just kind of there. Me. Yeah, so, I mean, again, I just have to see, like, what's going to happen because uh, the whole idea of Predators working with humans seems kind of interesting, but uh, I don't know. I had always assumed that they, if they were ever going to do another Predator movie, it was just going to be, like, a, uh, I guess, sort of pseudo callback to, like, the first one. They are going to have, like a predator hunting people again but at the very least you can say that this franchise always tries to do something different Mm -hmm. with uh these entries absolutely i think one thing that is different too with this to alien is how a lot of people really want 
Arnold's character to return in these movies, like Dutch, his character. And the funny yeah. thing is, like, Dutch was never really the Ripley of these movies. He was only in the first movie. Like, he never showed up again. It's it's yeah. not like Ripley where she was in all four of them. He was only in the first movie, and I think he was going to... He They had some kind of cameo for him in the 2010 film. He opted to pass on it. And I, I, apparently he had a cameo in this one, too, and he opted to pass on that one. He, did, he said it was just like a little minute thing at the end of the movie and he wasn't really interested in that i guess for whatever reason <laughs> i don't know what he's what has he, he got going on Arnold, Willis, what, are you, dude. what are you doing today but anyways the shane black film to me it's interesting uh, they're trying to do different he's trying to do different stuff with it uh he talked about it saying like he wants to do a predator film that really evolves the franchise in a way that's so fresh but also keeping in line with what people are expecting and stuff so i really hope it works out but there are a lot of red flags i think people are still upset about the whole kid bang in the movie but that's just kind of like a staple of shane black's films anyway i mean you look at the nice guys that had that one girl that was kind of in it um so yeah um mike what do you think though about the shane black predator film i'm interested to see what they're gonna do um, I definitely think there are a couple of red flags here and there. Yeah. Um, but that being said, they want to mix it up. They want to change things up for a new demographic, for you know, f- for a fresh audience. Yeah. Um, because the last time we had a predator seven was, years uh, ago, not included. Yeah, seven years ago, or even if if it's more like t- like with the originals. Oh yeah. It's that was even even longer. Um, I'm actually really interested to see what they're gonna do with you know some of those comedic characters, like or comedic actors. Yeah, Keegan say. and all. That, yeah. Yeah, see how how they're gonna go about the movie. If yeah. they're gonna be super funny, or if they're gonna be like somewhat serious, or a balance of the two, it'll be interesting. Definitely, see you know my boy Greyjoy in there. Um, <laughs> I just yeah, saw him in John Wick recently. That's a side note, but <laughs> yeah, um, so I'm really interested to see what Shane Black's gonna get out of them as performances and um, the characters. No, definitely. Um, so I think that yeah, that is a good note to wrap up the Predator discussion on. It's uh, uh you know, again, just to sum up. I love this franchise. It's brought me hours upon hours of joy and stuff, you know, playing the video Mm -hmm. games and reading the different comic books and all that stuff. I mean, I love the expanded universe to Alien and Predator, and hopefully some of you guys out there listening to the podcast also do entertain the idea of, you know, Alien and Predator existing in the same universe. I know there's purists out there that say, no, they're separate, or, you know, they, they don't like Predators in general or something like that, but... I've always enjoyed the crossover aspect of it. Um, so, yeah, I, I really, really love to see another Alien vs. Predator film, hopefully a, at some point in the future, that actually did it properly, because we, we know it could work. We've seen it in the comics mm-hmm. and games. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Nick, I have a question for you now. What's that? Who wins in a fight? Who a wins predator in a fight? predator or an alien? It's tough to say. It really depends on... I don't know, because... I mean, like a let's say like the basic predator in the first movie and the you know the first Zeno that we see in Alien. The first Zeno from Alien, I think the Predator has it honestly because that first one was just like a drone. He he was nothing really. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He was like okay. a baby. I would say the Predator. Yeah, has my money it. usually always is. Yeah, my money's usually always on Predator, even if I like Alien a little bit more. Yeah. He just has all those cool weapons and stuff, and he's got the dreads. Yeah, he can just blow it up. <laughs> he can just blow it up from like a mile away. <laughs> he'll kill but him then he'll, get, he'll get the acid all on him, and he'll just disintegrate, and he'll be a drone. Well, not if, he, well, not if he's like on a tree. He's just on a tree. <laughs> he's he on a tree. Him. <laughs> he just shoots him with his plasma gun. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, here you go. I think, yeah, that wraps up our talk on Predator, though. Definitely comment below. Also, I didn't ask this before, but... Comment below what are your favorite aspects of the franchise, what's your first experience with the films and etc. All that kind of stuff. Leave that all down in the comment section below. Um, I'd love to get like a, a, you know, just read all the stories and stuff that you guys have. But uh, moving on yeah. to our final segment of the show where we answer your viewer questions. So thanks again yeah. for submitting these with the hashtag AskAVPUnderworld. You get your questions answered on the next episode if you leave them down below too. Paul Estrada says, great episode, y'all. Talking about the last one. Um, so you guys always discuss and get questions about the films here, so here's something different. What's your favorite alien story and what's your favorite Predator story? No films, just comics and original stories. I would really enjoy hearing each of your thoughts. Okay, Michael, um, I don't think you're really familiar with the Expanded Universe, right? Like, the... Yeah, I'm, so I'm going to have to opt out this okay. uh, this question, okay. but I'm interested <laughs> to hear the answers. Okay, Luke, any, <laughs> Thanks for the question. any thoughts, Luke? Um... Comic books, stories, any video games, maybe? It's very recent, but, uh, cause like, 
In terms of like expanded universe stuff, it's very limited, my knowledge on it. I haven't read too many of the comic books, but I will tell you one thing. Um, Alien Isolation, I think, is probably one of my favorite uh, pieces of alien media, period. It's just uh, it's fantastic, and I think it really kind of puts you in the mind, mindscape of like the first movie mm-hmm. very well. So I'm going to say Alien Isolation is probably my favorite expanded universe thing. Okay. Um, so for me, I'll go this in two ways. So first off, Predator Story. My favorite, oh man, there's so many. You know, one that always sticks out to me, though, is the Bad Blood comic. I really enjoy that aspect and that just idea of like, a predator that has completely gone rogue and has thrown out his sense of honor and just kind of you know goes rogue and across the galaxy killing everything and that's when the predators actually send someone else to go kill him they they send another tribe to go kill him because he's kind of gone rogue you know he's bad blood predator berserk or whatever so i, I really enjoy that storyline that was a great comic and for alien there's also so many good ones um but two of them that actually stick out to me have to be Aliens Genocide, where we get the Xenomorph Civil War, you know, the red and black aliens fighting on their homeworld, and... Right, I remember that video. Yeah, and I also really enjoy the Aliens Rogue comic, where we get the King Alien. I thought that was a really interesting storyline. Um, so, those are my picks. Um, leave your own thoughts down in the comment section below as well, with your favorite Alien and Predator comics. But, that is going to wrap up this episode of AVP Underworld. Thank you guys for tuning in. And if you want to follow me on Twitter and tweet me questions for the show or just talk about Alien and Predator, you can find me on Twitter at who's underscore Nick. Michael, where can the people find you? Yeah, you guys can follow me over on my Twitter and Instagram at failwhale34 or my YouTube channel at failwhale34 as well. Okay, Luke? I am on Twitter at Baron underscore Zemo1. Okay, awesome. So thanks again, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Later, guys. Take care.